Hello, everyone, and happy Easter Monday. I wanted to start a new sort of teaching series on Mondays around our books of worship. The Anglicans have two primary um, books that we do our liturgies out of. Um, one is the Book of Alternative Services. That's sort of the modern day one. And then there's the Book of Common Prayer. The Book of Common Prayer is um, fairly similar to the one that dates back to uh, Queen Elizabeth Cramner back in uh, 1500s and 1600s. And so it's pretty similar. Um, there was a movement in, uh, in the last few decades uh, to contemporaryize the language and try to create a more ecumenical book that was trying to gather a, a bunch of different ideas from different denominations, not just Anglican, and bring them together. So what I wanted to do was go through these books a little bit with you, just to help you understand, and for myself, to sort of reflect on this foundation that is part of who we are as Anglicans. So the first thing I wanted to do was look at the idea of morning and evening prayer. This is an idea that has existed for a long time. And so for all of these ideas, what I want to basically do is just choose one passage from scripture, read it, and then either read over something that's in uh, one of these two books or just reflect on it. Uh, like in today's, we can't really re read anything because morning and evening prayer is the whole thing. <laughs> um, well, a big chunk of it. And so we'll look at that in a second. But first, let's just take a moment to pray. Lord God, we thank you that we have been given these two books, that you have guided minds and hearts throughout generations to build liturgies around your holy scripture and prayer, to build ways for us to build a relationship with you in a daily way so that we might see you and know you, that we might be filled with your grace and love and grow in the fullness of what that means. Lord God, guide our conversation and guide our words today. Amen. So the reading I wanted to take for you today was um, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 28. 1 Thessalonians 16, 5, 16. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I don't know about you, but often when I read through the letters of Paul, I often come to these last few phrases and think it's more of just a greeting or um, a kindness or a, uh, you know, a kind signature. But often Paul is doing a lot and telling us a lot all at once. One of the things he's establishing right away is 
Well, that this faith is about a changed life. And this should be no surprise to you that Christianity is not just a set of doctrines or ideas. It is a lived reality. And so that lived reality is meant to be present in our everyday life. And so that's why in these two books, daily prayer is one of the first things that comes up. On page one of the Book of Common Prayer and page 45 after some rubrics um, in the BCP, in the Book of Alternative Services, you'll find pretty much the first liturgy is daily prayer, morning, afternoon, and evening prayer. Because, well, it's important that we live in this, that we are daily fed by the realities. There's two central ideas I always take from uh, daily prayer. The first of which is living in scripture and the second is praying without ceasing. Is that prayer is meant to be a part of our whole lives, everything we do. That relationship with God, that continual conversation is meant to encompass everything. The way we talk to our friends, the way we work, it's all meant to be like a prayer to God, but we need dedicated time for that as well. And so we go to morning and evening prayer, dedicating, asking God to feed us through that into everything else. Also the idea of living in scripture. So if you are to do daily prayer, scripture changes every single day. And the original idea behind it was that you would go through the Psalms every month. So that would feed your prayer life. And then you would go through scripture in a year. That was the original idea. It's sort of become a little more lax these days. Um, but the idea was that we would live in scripture. The story of scripture would become our story and it would speak into our story and our story would speak into it. And there would this, be this beautiful cycle of, of mutual edification where we are fed and watered. We are enlivened with the very words that we read. There's some other essential ideas and we'll dig more into this as we go on. Um, but the, the essential sort of parts of morning and evening prayer are penitence, a sort of act or introduction of worship, uh, scripture reading, psalms, responsories, canticles, the affirmation of faith, which is the creed, and the prayers. All of these are essential parts to how we live our lives and morning and evening prayer. And so it's meant to feed into those. I'll talk more about those in weeks to come individually. But I want to just relate back to the scripture passage because we hear a bunch of those. So rejoice always. We're meant to be worshiping God continuously, rejoicing, giving thanks. It says that there too. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's what we do in script in, in our morning and evening prayer and communion. We continuously worship and give thanks. We rejoice with God. Pray continually, pray without ceasing. It's right there. For this is God's will for you. And if it's God's will for you, it's good. We're meant to do it. Do not quench the spirit. God's Holy Spirit was given to you in baptism. And it is with you, trying to guide you. And by connecting with God through prayer and scripture, you're beginning to recognize God more within you. And there's a way you can make room for him to move through you into powerful things. Do not treat prophecy with contempt, but test and hold on to all that is good. That's what we're trying to do here. In pen in our penitence, in our confessions, we are rejecting every kind of evil. Like Paul just said, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. 
There's a way in which living in the scripture is meant to sanctify you, to make you, to meant, meant to make you more like Christ. As you know him more, as you invite him in more, as you get to know his spirit more, as you pray with him more, as you invite him into your life, you become more like him. Blameless. We reach out to the faithful one. That's what prayer is all about. We trust. We say amen, which means so be it. We trust you, Lord, in your hands. Paul asks for their prayers. And he asks them to greet one another with a holy kiss. Part of morning and evening prayer is us gathering together, supporting each other, and sharing the love that Christ has shared with us with one another. The holy kiss, the kiss of peace, was where we, we get the uh, passing of the peace. Peace be with you. It started with a kiss, an intimate family act. And then Paul charges them. Read this letter in your community to your brothers and sisters. Share it. Share these stories. Share these teachings. Build one another up. There's another moment where Paul tells us to edify one another. Through gathering together, through praying, through sharing scripture, through prophesying, through sharing our stories and living in God's story, we have a chance to edify one another, to build one another up. That is what this is all about. We are built up and we built up one another through this beautiful prayer act. So I hope in the Sundays to come, because we're often practicing morning prayer and through the times together when we can finally be together, that you might see this morning prayer as an amazing act, as an amazing way in which we are fed, we grow, we are express our thanks, we rejoice, we pray without ceasing, and then we are fed for every moment of our life. I hope you might find an opportunity to do some kind of morning prayer every day, or some kind of prayer and scripture reading in your daily life, because it's meant to feed every part of you. Let's just say a quick prayer, and then we'll say goodbye for now. Lord God, in this Easter Monday, we thank you so much for who you are and who you have been with us. The way in which your resurrected life has moved in through each of us to change us and show us a way forward. We thank you for that sun that rises and brings warmth to our souls, that brings new life. We thank you that we can look around us now and see that Easter new life pouring out in our gardens, in the parks, in the trees. We thank you for this spring and the joy of new life. We pray that we might have it as a community and that we might have it through our morning and evening and daily prayer. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Happy Easter Monday.